，世界那么大，问题那么多，国际社会期待听到中国声音，看到中国方案。真诚希望，国际社会携起手来，秉持人类命运共同体的理念，把我们这个星球建设得更加和平，更加繁荣。The words sound commonplace, but they're nevertheless heartwarming. 你如果要到那边遇到台风了，是往回赶还是到哪里去避？跟大家照个相吧。When it comes to places belonging to China, no concession will be made over even an inch of them. Tense confrontations can easily turn to violence, so they should be handled properly. We Criminals may be cunning. But eventually, they will be brought to justice. It's early evening, and the tide is beginning to ebb. The fishing boats have returned to port. The central harbour in the town of Tanmen is crowded with boats. This weather-beaten fishing boat is the Qionghai 09045. Four years ago, it witnessed an historic moment. The thousand-year-old fishing port is a gateway to the South China Sea. On April the 8th, 2013, less than a month after becoming Chinese president, Xi Jinping arrives in the small town, which has a population of 20,000. His visit is significant. Two months earlier, the Philippines government under Benigno Aquino unilaterally initiated an arbitration case against China on the issue of the South China Sea. President Xi Jinping's visit to Tianmen demonstrates the new Chinese leadership's firm commitment to safeguarding China's maritime sovereignty. The Ganglu Bu, or Manual of Sea Routes, is a navigation log of the South China Sea compiled by Chinese seafarers since the Yuan Dynasty. It records the names and locations of the islands of the South China Sea. It provides irrefutable evidence that Chinese fishermen discovered and were the first to develop the islands of the South China Sea. In 2011, the United States initiated a strategy of returning to the Asia Pacific. As a result, the South China Sea became increasingly unstable. Interference by outside forces made the situation very dangerous, and this had a direct impact on people's lives. While one country played out the diplomatic farce of South China Sea arbitration, another was playing the military supremacy card of free navigation rights. 中国和菲律宾单方面提起这样一个南海仲裁，它是等于是绕开了这样一种规则，它是对过去中国和菲律宾我们达成的共识是一个破坏和违背。菲律宾那里很猖狂啊，他那个今天出来管我们了，但是我
China's aim is to build itself into a strong, non-hegemonic nation whose seas are peaceful. This is in line with the stance pursued since the 18th Communist Party of China National Congress in 2012 of becoming a world power. China will not pursue territorial expansion as the West did before, nor will it be humiliated by acceding to unreasonable demands. <laughs> The general principles China adheres to on this issue are to have a broad vision, see the overall picture, stand up for its rights, and refuse to concede a single inch of its territory. So, China naturally rejected the South China Sea arbitration. In the face of unfounded accusations, slander, censure, blame, and military provocations, China responded with sea patrols, legal recourse, and diplomacy. More than 200 islands and reefs are scattered across the three and a half million square kilometers of the South China Sea. It's March the 31st, 2016 in Washington, D.C. June the 18th in Belgrade, Serbia. June the 25th in Beijing, China. At every opportunity, Xi Jinping reaffirms China's stance on the South China Sea issue and explains China's proposals for resolving it. In May 2016, the seventh ministerial meeting of the China Arab States Cooperation Forum was held in Qatar. The meeting agreed the Doha Declaration. In it, the Arab League expressed its support for China's stance on the South China Sea issue. The first such declaration by any regional organization it had a powerful impact in the international community. Subsequently, more than 80 countries and international and regional organizations have backed China's position. And more than 240 political parties and organizations in 120 countries, along with 280 leading think tanks and non-governmental organizations, have voiced support for China's stance on resolving the dispute through negotiations. Some of the aspects concerning the South China Sea are not governed by the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. If it would focus on the territorial sea aspect, it would overstep its jurisdiction and it would have no right to rule on these questions. Around the time of the so-called Arbitration Award, the CPC's publicity department hosted three major seminars on the South China Sea issue. They were held in The Hague, where the International Court of Justice is based, in Washington, D.C., the U.S. capital, and in Singapore, a member of ASEAN. The aim was to reveal the truth about the so-called Arbitration Award. Wu Shizun is a senior expert on the South China Sea. On July the 5th, 2016, he attended a dialogue for Chinese and U.S. think tanks in Washington, D.C. The China-U.S. dialogue held the day after U.S. Independence Day attracted considerable attention. China's former state councillor Dai Bingor made a speech in which he described the award rendered by the arbitral tribunal as a waste of paper. The strong wording, firmness and reasonableness of his speech made a deep impression on those who heard it. 
中国人并没有被吓倒，哪怕美国全部十个航母战斗群都开进南海，我想也吓不倒中国人。On July the 12th, 2016, the temporary arbitral tribunal issued its award. The absurdity of its pronouncement sparked uproar in the international community. Of the five arbitrators brought together to form the tribunal, four were selected by Raiwi Junji, the controversial Japanese president of the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea. The temporary tribunal, in a move clearly designed to raise its own status, rented the premises of the permanent court of arbitration at the Peace Palace in The Hague. From the composition of the panel to its award, the tribunal showed time and again that it was not legitimate and not fit to make a ruling. Xi Jinping said that the Nanhai Zhu Dao has been the land of the Chinese land. The Chinese land of the Nanhai land of the land of the Nanhai land of the Nanhai land in any situation is not the case of the Nanhai land 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 of the Nanhai land. It's July the 12th, 2016, at the Diao Yutai State Guest House in Beijing, Xi Jinping meets President of the European Council Donald Tusk and President of the European Commission Jean-Claude Juncker. He reiterates China's position that it does not accept any proposition or action based on the so-called South China Sea Arbitration Award. In the immediate aftermath of the award, the Chinese government issued two statements and one white paper. All insisted that China would never accept any claim or action based on the award. They also maintained that China would continue to seek resolution of the dispute through negotiation and consultation on the basis of respecting historical facts and in accordance with international law. China's position has gained understanding and support from a growing number of countries. Its attitude to the South China Sea dispute is to adhere to the approach of combining struggle with cooperation. Based on the principles of amity, sincerity, mutual benefit and inclusiveness, and in the direction of building a neighborhood community of shared future, China's maritime cooperation with the ASEAN countries has made steady progress. On October the 18th, 2016, the newly elected Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte visits China. In a joint declaration, the two countries indicate that relations have been normalized. His visits, like those by Vietnam's Prime Minister Nguyen Yuan Chuan Phuc and Malaysia's Prime Minister Najib Razak, indicates that dialogue and cooperation are now playing the leading role in regional diplomacy. That is really the aim of China, to improve the lives of all the ASEAN uh, so that in helping, China would also be assured so uh, you would like it will be trouble-free and uh, you know, uh, everybody happy and everybody comfortable. Today, China-Philippines relations are less strained and maritime cooperation between China and ASEAN is steadily improving. History is littered with examples of territorial disputes that have escalated into international conflicts. China is opening up a new path where disputes can be turned into opportunities for cooperation. The idea of uh, China uh, being able to, you know, uh, promote economic co cooperation, trade relations with its neighboring countries in Asia is something that is valuable and something that is a, it's a good principle. It's one that's related to uh, mutual prosperity, you know, what, what China has been claiming in terms of what it uh, aspires to for the region. It's midwinter 2016. Typhoon Tokaji is battering the waves off Huangyan Island. The Chinese Coast Guard receives a report from Tanmen that a Chinese fishing boat has rescued two Filipino fishermen from drowning near the island. Typhoon Tokaji is powerful enough to capsize any ship. Despite the danger, a Chinese Coast Guard vessel immediately puts to sea. After a day spent battling high winds and waves, it finally brings the Filipino fishermen on board. 
他说他们船翻掉以后啊，所有东西都没有了。然后我们政委就号召大家嘛，就是我们自己船员，拿出那个什么衣服啊、鞋啊来给他们，就给他们基本上是很好的安置。Three days later, in the waters east of Huangyan Island, the rescued fishermen are handed over to the Philippines Coast Guard. A Reuters commentary says that this shows a rapid warming in relations between the two countries. In February 2017, the China-Philippine Joint Coast Guard Committee on Maritime Cooperation was established. In June, 20 Filipino Coast Guards arrived in China for a month-long law enforcement training course. Coast Guard diplomacy has become a feature of bilateral relations. You know, I don't think uh, we, we would have problem with the uh, Coast Guard. We have the same mission, almost the same. But if it's search and rescue, we will always um, uh, cooperate. It's the afternoon of April the 30th, 2017. A Chinese fleet is arriving at the port of Davao in the Philippines. This is the first visit to the country by the Chinese Navy in seven years. President Duterte is on hand, and he comes on board the Chinese ship Changchun. <laughs> May 2017, Guiyang and China is hosting two key meetings. At one of the meetings, China and ASEAN reach consensus on the framework for a code of conduct in the South China Sea. Philippines and China's relationship is unparalleled. Davao is the largest port city on the island of Mindanao in the southern Philippines. Its hot and humid climate is said to be the reason for the sweetness of its bananas. Randy Gonzalez is happy with this year's harvest. Because it, the relationship between China will be continue like this, the business industry will be good. Um, and, um, Philippines are many boxes um, go to China and we earn um, more salary this month. The bananas, after being packed and loaded in containers, are shipped from Davao to China. The voyage traces the course of a thriving trade route. Of the 10 vessels that are calling the ICT, the ICT every week, seven vessels go to uh, China. Working together is the only way to resolve disputes. On August the 5th, 2017, the 50th ASEAN Foreign Ministers' Meeting is held in the Philippines. The next day, the framework for the Code of Conduct in the South China Sea is officially adopted. Years of hard work have finally paid off. China wants to build a peace and a peace. It's been over four years since Xi Jinping was in Tianmen. In the calmer regional situation, the Chinese people and those of the neighboring countries now have the opportunity to share happiness and good harvests. Under the leadership of the CPC with Xi Jinping as the core, China has stood firm in safeguarding its sovereignty and its rights and interests in the South China Sea. With a strong wind blowing over the area, Chinese Coast Guard vessels are sailing to the Diaoyu Islands. When the Chinese Coast Guard are patrolling near the Diaoyu Islands, they often encounter Japanese Coast Guard vessels demanding that they leave the area. But the reply from the Chinese ships is always firm and clear. Japan海保厅集合团, 
你们进入我国管辖海域，你们遵守我国法律法规。日本海上保安庁新聞，こちらは中国海艦艦隊。中国海艦艦隊は中国の管轄海域、それのパトロールを行っています。皆さんは我が国の管轄海域に侵入した。我が国の国境を守ってください。Xinjiang's duties include asserting China's sovereignty by issuing warnings to Japanese ships. In 2013, he became popular on the internet and acquired a nickname, Recitation Boy. The dangers faced by China's Coast Guard vessels patrolling close to the Diaoyu Islands come not only from foreign intrusions. At times, the ships also have to confront terrifying sea conditions. But whatever the threats and dangers, the Chinese Coast Guards always act with courage and stand firm in safeguarding the nation's sovereignty. It's September the 11th, 2012, in Tokyo. Ignoring China's strong protests and repeated representations, the Japanese government claims to have purchased two islands in the Diaoyu Group at a cost of 26 million US dollars. In the 1970s, in view of the overriding importance of establishing bilateral relations, the Chinese and Japanese governments reached an understanding that the issue of the Diaoyu Islands would be set aside for resolution at a later date. The farcical island purchase represented an attack on China's territorial sovereignty. It provoked a strong protest from China and a full range of diplomatic countermeasures. On September the 10th, 2012, the Chinese Foreign Ministry issued a strongly worded statement calling the islands purchased by the Japanese government wholly illegal and therefore invalid. On September the 11th, CCTV, for the first time, covered the Diaoyu Islands in its weather forecast. On September the 13th, China's UN ambassador delivered a document to the Secretary General containing a map of the Diaoyu and affiliated islands. On September the 25th, the State Council Information Office published a white paper, Diaoyu Islands, China's Inherent Territory. China, through its firm stance, clarified the Diaoyu Islands issue for the international community and received a positive response. In March 2014, a US-made documentary, Diaoyu Islands, The Truth, was shown in Los Angeles. The Diaoyu Islands are already shown as part of China in the early maritime charts of the famous Chinese navigator, Chang He. Another historic fact is that Japanese maritime charts of 1783, as well as the official 1876 map of Imperial Japan, show that the Diaoyu Islands were not part of Japan. The world needs to know the truth because they do not know. And since the Western media is biased against China, the truth is always not being told. And the truth is that the Diaoyu Islands are Chinese and have been since many, many centuries. My minister, you know, together with the whole cabinet. In early 2014, the Chinese and Japanese ambassadors to the UK engaged in a fierce debate on the popular BBC program, Newsnight. The exchange, which focused on the South China Sea, was widely reported. Through a display of eloquence and wisdom, Chinese ambassador Liu Xiaoming defeated his Japanese counterpart, Koji Suruoka. Within two days, seven other Chinese ambassadors, including those to the US, Russia, Kazakhstan, and Ecuador, published their own criticisms of Japan's misguided stance on historical and territorial issues. It's December the 13th, 2012. To coincide with a Coast Guard patrol, China's B-3837 maritime surveillance plane flies over the Diaoyu Islands. This is the first time China has conducted a joint patrol near the Diaoyu Islands.
我们的正当权益。中国人民不信邪，也不怕邪；不惹事儿，也不怕事儿。任何外国不要指望我们会拿自己的核心利益做交易，不要指望我们会吞下损害我国主权、安全、发展利益的苦果。Under the leadership of the CPC, with President Xi Jinping as the core, China has always been a contributor to world peace. It's committed to promoting, defending and sharing peace with every country in the world. In September 2014, China and Japan launched a new round of high-level consultations on maritime affairs. Two months later, they reached a four-point agreement on the principles for handling and improving bilateral relations. It's November the 10th, 2014. Xi Jinping has agreed to a request from Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe for a meeting. Abe is in China to attend an APEC summit. This is the first time the leaders of China and Japan have met face to face since the island purchase fiasco. Xi Jinping expresses the hope that the Japanese side will handle issues properly in line with the four point agreement. As neighbors separated by a narrow strip of water, win-win cooperation must be their ultimate goal. In October 2015 and September 2016, the 11th and 12th Beijing-Tokyo forums were held in Beijing and Tokyo, respectively. More than 1,000 representatives from China and Japan participated in the dialogues. In June 2017, the 7th round of China-Japan high-level consultations on maritime affairs held in Fukuoka, Japan, confirmed the principle of carrying out bilateral maritime cooperation by managing differences through dialogue. Reflecting on history shows that one can go forward steadily only when vortexes and swift currents are avoided. Looking to the future, one should not fear lingering clouds in seizing the opportunity for peace and development. On the East China Sea, dialogue and cooperation are the sole path to a brighter future. The situation on the Korean Peninsula has been complex and volatile for some time. The DPRK has carried out several nuclear tests and ballistic missile launches while the United States and South Korea have held regular joint military exercises. As a result, conflict could break out at any moment. Time and again, storm clouds gather over the Korean Peninsula, the place known as the last outpost of the Cold War. The eyes of the world are focused on a meeting on the western side of the Pacific. For the first time, Chinese President Xi Jinping is coming face to face with his US counterpart, Donald Trump. During the meeting, the two presidents exchange views on the DPRK issue. Both reaffirm their commitment to the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. In the three months after their meeting, the two presidents exchange three phone calls in which they discuss the situation in Korea. Xi and Trump meet again at the G20 summit in Hamburg when Xi reiterates to Trump that China is committed to the denuclearization of the peninsula, to peace and stability there, and to the resolution of issues through dialogue and consultation. China has repeatedly explained that it will maintain communication and work closely with all parties involved in the Korea issue. 在朝鲜半岛问题上呢，习近平总书记和外国领导人见面时谈的最多的话题之一，中国的立场是一贯的明确的，就是三个坚持：坚持实现半岛无核化，坚持维护半岛和平稳定，坚持通过对话协商解决
双方提出了双暂停倡议，就是朝鲜暂停核导活动，美韩暂停大规模联合军演。倡议的出发点就是给局势降温，为通过对话杰出，政治解决问题，创造条件，维护半岛的和平稳定。It's July the 6th, 2017. In Berlin, President Xi Jinping is holding talks with South Korean President Moon Jae-in. They exchange views on the situation on the Korean Peninsula. President Xi says once again that China is committed to the denuclearization of the peninsula, to peace and stability there, and to the resolution of the issue through dialogue and consultation. Asia is on the rise. In an era of change, worries and doubts are hard to avoid. On the one hand, Asia is an engine of the world economy. On the other, it's vulnerable to security threats and conflicts. To keep the world's progress in the 21st century, you can't be completely immersed in the 21st century, and your mind is still stuck in the old age of the old age. We think we should be able to sing and sing in the Asian-American relationship with the Asian-American relationship. 创新安全理念，搭建地区安全和合作新架构，努力走出一条共建、共享、共赢的亚洲安全之路。Xi Jinping is advocating common, comprehensive, cooperative, and sustainable security in Asia. Is charting a path for future security cooperation in the region. It's the morning of June the 2nd, 2015. The Gulf of Aden has been battered by strong winds and high waves. Marine commandos belonging to the Chinese Navy's 20th Escort Fleet are traveling in small launches alongside the Yuan Chuanhu oil tanker. The tanker, which is carrying almost $300 million worth of crude oil, is en route for the southern tip of the Mandeb Strait. In these exposed waters, the Yuan Chuanhu represents an easy target for pirates. Having traveled for 50 hours under escort, the tanker reaches safety. For Chinese merchant ships operating in the Gulf of Aden, the commandos and naval escorts are a vital security guarantee. Over the past five years, China has been more focused than ever before on protecting its overseas interests. In November 2014, at a meeting of the CPC to discuss foreign affairs, Xi Jinping stated that China's overseas interests should be properly safeguarded and, to this end, protection efforts stepped up. On May 26, 2015, for the first time, a National Defense White Paper refers to areas of crucial importance to China's overseas interests. Guaranteeing China's sustainable development in the era of globalization requires the country's military to go global to protect the country's interests. Up until July 2017, the Chinese Navy had maintained a 100% safety record for vessels it had escorted. It's July the 11th, 2017. The Jinggangshan and Dong Haidao are departing from Zhenjiang in Guangdong province. The ceremony, though short, makes headlines. The vessels are carrying Chinese military personnel headed for the PLA's first overseas support base in Djibouti. This is a milestone for Chinese militaries going global process that has been increasingly high profile over the past five years. A guard of honor of the three services of the PLA took part in the military parade marking the 70th anniversary of Russia's victory in World War II. A Chinese Navy fleet participated in the RIMPAC 2014 military exercise off Hawaii. The Chinese vessel, the Xiangtan, was in Germany for Kiel Week. Chinese Navy ships paid a goodwill visit to the United Kingdom. A Chinese naval contingent visited Saudi Arabia. China's military, with its calm and assertive demeanor, conveys to the world the country's sincerity and resolve in sharing peace with every country and in maintaining global and regional security and stability. 
With China's development, an increasing number of its citizens and businesses are heading overseas. This going global trend has occasionally been blighted by incidents targeting Chinese enterprises and individuals. With the global security situation deteriorating, safeguarding the country's interests overseas is facing more complex challenges than ever before. The Golden Triangle is synonymous with the production of illegal drugs. It's March 2013 and on the Mekong River, law enforcement officers from China and Laos are conducting a joint operation. The operation has lasted for six months and involves more than 40 people. Now, after a three-hour chase, officers of the China-Laos Joint Law Enforcement Team have succeeded in stopping the vessel, the Chen Yu. On board, they find large quantities of ice. The morning of October the 5th, 2011, two commercial vessels, the Huaping and Yuxing 8, have been hijacked on the Golden Triangle section of the Mekong River. 13 Chinese sailors have been brutally murdered by a drugs gang. The Mekong River massacre shocks the whole world. In response and on China's initiative, China, Laos, Myanmar and Thailand establish a joint security cooperation mechanism in the Mekong River Basin. The Golden Watercourse is prospering again. For Chinese commercial shipping on the Mekong, the presence of their country's law enforcement vessels offers convenience and safety. It's July the 28th, 2014, and in talks with Chomoli Sayasone, the president of Laos, Xi Jinping calls for security cooperation and bilateral law enforcement to be deepened. He says joint patrols and border controls should be strengthened in order to crack down on terrorism and cross-border crimes. The Safe River Joint Anti-Drugs Program launched in 2013 has proved highly successful. By the end of 2016, more than 20,000 people have been arrested on drugs-related charges. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime considers the program a model for regional cooperation in the fights against drugs trafficking. In 2015, Cambodia and Vietnam joined the Safe River Program. This raised the number of participating countries to six. As a successful security cooperation mechanism on the Mekong River, it represents a new path of cooperation in law enforcement. So for three years, uh, Pan, we have uh, six countries working together. with is smuggling uh, along Mekong River and Golden Temple area. From its military going global to its law enforcement going global, wherever Chinese feet are planted, Chinese protection follows. China's diplomacy in adhering to the principle of serving ordinary people is now making use of a wider range of resources and measures. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon on November the 16th, 2016, a flight from the United States arrives in Beijing. On board is Yang Xiaozhu, who is top of the list of China's 100 most wanted overseas fugitives. She has spent 13 years on the run. China's Fugitive Repatriation and Asset Recovery Office under the Central Anti-Corruption Coordination Group established in June 2014 has worked hard to bring Yang Xiaozhu to justice. Yang Xiaozhu is the president of the Chinese government, so his case is a big deal. The Chinese government has started a joint cooperation in the Yang Xiaozhu case. The Chinese government is going to go to the sea. The Chinese government is going to go to the sea. 
，十年、二十年都要追，切断腐败分子的后路。In June 2014, the Fugitive Repatriation and Asset Recovery Office was established. The following month, the Fox Hunt campaign was launched, followed in March 2015 by the Skynet operation. A month later, a list of China's top 100 fugitives was published in an Interpol red notice. No one can escape justice. In the past five years in particular, China has stepped up its international operations to combat corruption. <laughs> 把这个最早这项工作，把外资法合作，要求纳入外交工作的整体的布局。他八十多次在不同的国际场合来提及此事，因为他取得了非常大的成效。It's November 2014 at the 22nd APEC Economic Leaders Meeting held beside Yanqi Lake in Beijing. The Beijing Declaration on Fighting Corruption is adopted. 我们大力推动亚太反腐败合作。建立亚太经合组织反腐败执法合作网络，就追逃、追赃、开展执法合作等达成重要共识。This is the first anti-corruption declaration named after a capital city in APEX history. It's also a clear statement of China's uncompromising stance on dealing with corruption. 我们的目标就是要打消所有违法分子的幻想，让他们明白，海外不是法外，避罪没有天堂。Western countries have now begun working with China in the fight against corruption. A number of major fugitives have now been repatriated or extradited to China from various countries, including the United States, Canada, Australia, and Singapore. 今天呢，受党和政府政策的感召，我从美国回到了中国，呃，接受组织的审查。In the past five years, the Party Central Committee, with Xi Jinping as the core, has strengthened China's cooperation with the international community in the fight against corruption. No place on earth will ever be a safe haven for fugitives. By the end of May 2017, 3,051 Chinese fugitives in 90 countries and regions had been arrested and almost one and a half billion dollars in illicit assets recovered. By the end of July, 43 Chinese fugitives named in the Interpol Red Notice had been arrested. Xi Jinping has been leading China to forge ahead in developing its international relations. Whether struggling for sovereignty and territorial integrity, ensuring national and global security, or protecting the country's development interests. Chinese diplomacy is revealing strength, courage, and a sense of responsibility. Through words and actions, China is demonstrating its diplomatic resolve.